One of the questions that I get most often from my students is, how do we know how far away other planets in our solar system are from the sun? How do we know all of those distances? And we have very advanced methods of figuring that out today, but I'm gonna tell you about a method that could be used as far back as 1619. So we've had a way to figure this out for hundreds of years, and it was developed by the famous astronomer Kepler. And so Kepler developed three laws of planetary motion. And I'm gonna focus on this third law today. And that basically tells us this, T squared over R cubed equals one uh, for our solar system. Now he did say in other solar systems, this one could be some other value. So maybe it's two or three or one half, but he said for our solar system, T squared over R cubed equals one. So what is T and what is R? We need to understand that in order to make sense of this equation. Well, T stands for the orbital period of the planet. So if we're looking at planet Earth and we're wondering how long does it take the Earth to orbit the sun? How many years? That would be our T value in this equation. So what is T for planet Earth? It's one. It takes one Earth year for the Earth to orbit the sun. But if this was a planet like Mars or Jupiter that's further away from the sun, it would take much longer than one Earth year to orbit the sun. So if it took 10 years, we would plug in a 10 for T. So orbital period is just the number of years it takes a planet to orbit our sun once. R is called the orbital distance. So orbital distance is how far away is that planet from the sun on average. Now remember, planets don't orbit in per perfect circles. They orbit in ellipses, which are like stretched out orbits. So that means sometimes they're a little bit further away. Sometimes they're a little bit closer to the sun. But on average, you could say that every planet is a certain orbital distance away from the star. And that is the R in this equation. So basically, Kepler said, if you take the amount of time it takes for a planet to go around the sun and square that and divide that by the distance away from the sun that that planet is cubed that ratio will always equal one for every single planet in our solar system now how did he develop this equation it seems so random to make that connection right how could we possibly figure this out well there was another scientist before kepler his name was tycho brahe and it was spelled like this t-y-c-h-o brahe uh, Tycho is the correct pronunciation. It's not Tycho, even though it does look that way. So Tycho Brahe basically watched planets through his telescope for many, many years, and he paid special attention to planet Mars, and he collected lots and lots of data about their orbit. He watched how many years it took to go around the sun, and he had all this data available. And then after he was done doing his work, Kepler came in and looked at that data, and through careful observation and some analysis, he was able to come up with this equation. So now I'm going to show you how we can use this equation to actually figure out the distance away to all the different planets in our solar system and answer our age-old question of how do we know. Before I show an example using this equation, uh, first I need to look at r for a second because r, remember I said, is the distance from the planet to the star, which is what we're trying to figure out today. Um, but the distance is not measured in meters or feet or miles or even light years. It has a special unit that most people are not aware of. So let's say this is the sun and this is planet Earth here. And so the distance from the Earth to the sun, we call one astronomical unit, one AU. And so an astronomical unit is a special unit of measurement that is defined as the distance, the average distance from the sun to our planet Earth. We call that one AU, one astronomical unit. So if we were doing this equation for Earth, we would plug in a one for T because it takes one year for the Earth to go around the sun. And we would plug in a one for R because the Earth is exactly one astronomical unit of distance away from the sun. And so we'd have one squared over one cubed cubed equals one, and that checks out. So there's a simple proof of that equation working. Okay, but how would this work for another planet like Saturn? How far away from the sun is Saturn? Well, it turns out that Saturn is approximately 9.58 astronomical units away from our sun. So that means Saturn is almost 10 times further away from the sun compared to Earth. If you looked at the distance from the Earth to the sun, Saturn is nine and a half times further away on average. Remember, this is an average because it has a non-circular orbit. It's gonna be further than this sometimes. It's gonna be a little closer than this at other times, but on average, it's almost 10 times further away from the sun than the Earth is. 
Okay, so now that we understand what orbital period is and what orbital distance is, I think we're ready to use this equation to figure out how far away is planet Mars from the Sun. And so let's start by rearranging this equation slightly because if we have a one on this side, mathematically we could just bring the r cubed over to the other side. Or you could think of this as multiplying the left side by r cubed and then multiplying the right side by r cubed. So it would cancel on the left, you'd end with uh, t squared on this side and r cubed on this side. So I'm just rewriting the equation slightly to look like this. So um, t squared. So we actually know t from Mars. How did we figure it out? Well, remember Kepler was observing Mars for many, many years. So he watched Mars carefully and figured out how many Earth years it took to go around the sun. So do you know how many years it takes for Mars to go around the sun? It takes approximately 1.88 Earth years. So t for Mars happens to be 1.88 Earth years, okay? And so that means for our equation, I'm gonna plug in a 1.88 on this side, and we have to square that as equal to R cubed. Okay, so now I can use my calculator to figure out what 1.88 squared is, so let's do that now. And we get 3.534, so we have r cubed is equal to 3.534. So I just swapped the side. So we have r cubed is equal to this number here. And so to solve for r, which remember is the average distance from the sun to Mars, I can do this. I can say that r is equal to the cubed root of 3.534. So I'm sure you're familiar with the square root. Um, this is similar, but we're doing a cubed root. And if you don't know how to do this, there's another way of writing that. We could say this is 3.534 to the one third power. So a cubed root is the same as taking something to the one third power. And that's something we can very easily do in most calculators. So R, solving for the distance from the sun to Mars, is this number 3.534 to the one third power. And we get 1.52. R equals 1.52. And remember, this is measured in AU, astronomical units. So Mars is 1.52 astronomical units away from the sun. What does that mean? Remember, an astronomical unit is an Earth distance away. So this answer is telling us that Mars is approximately one and a half times further from the sun than the Earth is. So whatever distance we are from the sun on average, add another 50% 50, 50 and you basically have the distance to Mars. So how far away is the Earth from the sun? Well, we actually know this number. Let me erase this over here. And so the Earth is an average distance of 93 million miles away from our sun. 93 million miles, that seems pretty far, but remember, Sunlight travels at the speed of light and it only takes about eight minutes for the sun's light to reach planet Earth once the light leaves the sun. So it's not as far as it looks. Um, so if Earth is 93 million miles away, Mars is 1.52 times further. So it would be 93 million miles times 1.52. And that gives us 141.36. So I'm gonna say equals 141.36 million miles and there's our answer right so we use kepler's third law to actually figure out how far away from the sun mars is on average but remember sometimes it is going to be closer than this sometimes it is going to be further away because mars's orbit is not a perfect circle just like every other planet all right let's try one more real quick so how far away is jupiter from the sun well we can figure that out using the same equation and uh you know watching jupiter through a telescope you would see that it takes jupiter approximately 11.86 years to get around the sun for one orbit so for t we're going to plug in 11.86 and so you're going to notice that Jupiter has a much longer orbital period than Mars does. It takes much more time to go around the sun because it's so much further away from the sun compared to Earth and Mars. And so if we set this equal to R cubed, um, first we figure out what 11.86 squared is. And so if I plug that in, I get this number here. That's 140.66. So one, uh, R cubed equals 140. 
And then R is just gonna equal the cubed root of this number. And so if you do the calculation, you actually get approximately 5.2. And so that means that Jupiter is about five times further away from the sun than Earth is. It's about five Earth distances away, or more exactly, 5.2 Earth distances away. And again, we could do this for every other planet in the solar system. And what's really beautiful is if you know the orbital period of any object, whether it's an asteroid or a comet or anything orbiting our star, including that Tesla Model 3 that's currently in solar orbit, if you know the T for that object, you can calculate its average distance away from the sun. So it doesn't just apply to planets, it applies to any object that's in our sun's orbit. And remember, this equation also works for other solar systems, but they're just gonna have a different constant on the right side. So it won't be one, it will be some other number, but Kepler's third law still holds true. And that's pretty amazing. Round and round, the planets. Don't you know?